So you've decided to put the two-part dosing days behind you and now looking to set up your new calcium reactor. Need some help setting it up? Stay tuned. Hello, this is Jeremy from Coralview, welcoming you back to another episode of CVTV. Today we will continue our three video series dedicated to calcium reactors with episode number two, assembly and installation of a reef octopus calcium reactor. Corals, invertebrates, and even coralline algae all constantly use enough calcium and alkalinity in our aquariums. A calcium reactor is a piece of equipment that helps simultaneously maintain alkalinity and calcium throughout the day, attaining the ultimate in stability and growth of stony corals. In episode one of our three-part series, we explore what a calcium reactor is, what is needed to run a reactor, and what to look for when purchasing one for your system. Reef Octopus offers a wide array of calcium reactors for aquariums ranging from small 50-gallon systems to large public aquariums in the thousands of gallons. They come in single and double chamber and AC or variable speed DC recirculation pumps. For this video, we will be assembling the Reef Octopus CR140 reactor, but all models assemble the same way. Reef Octopus calcium reactors come disassembled for shipping. Assembly is rather simple and will only take a few minutes. Before we start, let's make sure that all components are included and nothing is missing from the box. Your reactor should have reactor body with sponges and bracket, plumbing, recirculation pump, probe holder, o-ring seals, tubing with check valve, and shutoff valves. Let's begin assembly by placing the reactor and its included components on a flat, stable working surface. With the pre-installed o-ring and the recirculation pump's output in place, install the recirculation pump to the reactor body by threading the nut on the reactor counterclockwise. Be sure not to over tighten. As with all o-rings, I suggest you use a food grade silicone o-ring lubricant to preserve your o-ring seals. Grab the clear o-ring seal and insert it into the nut on the intake fitting and thread clockwise onto the intake threads of the recirculation pump. Install one of the two black o-rings into the designated channel on the top union of the T-fitting. Place a second black o-ring within the plumbing near the top of the reactor. Align the cross-section plumbing to the intake T and to the connection coming from the side of the reactor. Turn the union nut clockwise to lock and seal. Be careful not to over tighten. Rotate the lid counterclockwise to remove. Carefully insert the larger clear o-ring into the channel around the lid. The lid of the reactor has three ports, effluent output, CO2 recirculation line, and pH probe holder. Thread the pH probe holder into the top of the reactor lid. The probe holder has a pre-installed o-ring to form a seal and a probe plug for when the probe is not in use. With a section of included tubing and a shutoff valve, we will create the CO2 recirculation loop to prevent the accumulation of gas at the top of the reaction chamber. Attach one end of the line into the port opposite of the bubble counter then the other end of the port into the lid that does not have the extension tube on the underside. With a tubing cutter or sharp pair of scissors, make a cut in the CO2 recirculation line near the top of the reactor and install a valve by mending the line we just cut. Now that the reactor is assembled, let's carefully move it to a level and stable surface as close to the sump as possible. The shorter the hoses, the better. Do not lift the reactor by the flange or plumbing and never, ever, ever lift the reactor when it is full of water. The Reef Octopus Reactor Recirculation Pump can be submerged in water and can be installed in a sump if desired. Let's begin the CO2 installation. With the CO2 cylinder's main valve off, attach the dual gauge regulator and tighten securely using a Teflon gasket. Do not use any paste or tape. The gauge on the left reads CO2 levels in the cylinder, while the gauge to the right reads the pressure of the gas leaving the regulator. Attach a length of supplied tubing to the regulator and then to the bubble counter on the reactor. Cut the tubing close to the bubble counter and install the CO2 check valve with the arrow pointing towards the bubble counter. 
close the needle valve on the regulator. Slowly open the main cylinder valve and dial in the adjustment knob on the regulator until the outlet pressure reads 3 to 5 psi. Do not connect the regulator to the power at this time. Connect the short piece of included tubing into the reactor's intake located at the bottom teeth that is aligned with the intake of the recirculation pump. Attach a valve and then another length of tubing that connects to your water feed source. There are three possible methods to feed the reactor. Gravity, which we do not recommend. The second and most used method is by pushing water through the reactor with a small feed pump and regulate the flow using a small pin valve on the reactor's output, also known as the effluent. It is critical that we use a small pump as we are only looking to feed enough pressure to match the pressure from the CO2 inlet and the effluent. Problems arise when one is higher than the other. The third and most recommended option is a peristaltic pump like the Camor FXSTP, connected to the reactor's output, not input, and pull water through the reactor and back into the sump. It provides the very best in stability, control, and accuracy. The FXSTP will provide continuous flow that can be adjusted between 0 and 150 milliliters per minute. In this video, we'll opt for the third option. Place a line in the sump and secure it in place below the water level, but away from the bottom and connect the other end to a valve. Using a short piece of line, connect that valve to the reactor's intake. Using a barbed adapter that can be found at your local hardware store, connect the flexible tubing included with your Camor pump to the reactor's output located on the lid. Connect the other end of the line to your Camor's input. Now attach a line to the pump's output and secure the other end of the line into the sump above the water level. Remove the reactor lid retainer bracket, and top sponge. With one sponge in place at the bottom of the reactor, carefully fill the chamber three quarters of the way up with rinsed calcium carbonate media. Place the top sponge on top of the media and then the retainer bracket table side down on top of the sponge. Failure to install the top sponge and retainer bracket correctly will cause the media to rise, make its way into the pump, and cause irreparable damage. Now close the valve located on the reactor's intake and fill the reactor chamber to the rim with tank water. Screw on the lid making sure that the o-ring is properly installed. At this time we can install the pH probe into the holder to monitor and control the CO2 level inside the reactor. As with any probe, be sure to properly calibrate it using the instructions provided by your controller. For calcium reactors, it is common to calibrate the probe to the low range using the pH 4 and pH 7 calibration solutions. Unscrew the nut from the probe holder and remove the plug from the center. Take the o-ring off the plug. Slip the nut on the pH probe and then install the o-ring sliding it about 3 inches from the bottom tip. Insert the probe with the nut into the holder on the lid and then tighten the nut to secure the probe in place. Now it's time to start the reactor. First, Connect the recirculation pump to the power and then run it at full speed. Second, open the valve located on the reactor's intake line. Finally, start your Camor pump. We recommend running the pump at about 50 milliliters per minute or higher for at least two hours to ensure all trapped air is purged from the reactor. After purging the reactor, reduce the speed of the Camor FXSTP to about 20 to 30 milliliters per minute. Now connect your CO2 regulator to power or controller if you're using one. Adjust the needle valve on the regulator to obtain a bubble count of about one bubble every three seconds. Remember that when adjusting the bubble count, there is a lag time since the hose has to accept any changes in pressure. Monitor the reactor closely until the pH inside reaches 6.6 .6 to 7. This is a good time to set your controller to automatically shut off the CO2 regulator if the pH level inside the reactor goes below 6.6. .6. Now we have a fully running calcium reactor that is ready to be dialed in. As always, inspect the reactor for any leaks before leaving it unattended. In the next episode, we will discuss how to fine-tune the calcium reactor to your system's needs. 
We'll cover what to test for and what to do when your alkalinity and calcium are out of whack. We'll also go over some commonly asked questions and troubleshooting. Our goal is to help reefers like you maintain successful reef tanks by providing you with the key information that will make a calcium reactor easy to understand and use. If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralView Aquarium Products.